Yeah, so security was something that was kind of interesting for us to start with. In Sarasota, because of the mid-century modern buildings, you know, there's been quite a open conversation publicly and privately about what to do with them. Uh, Riverview was, in fact, a, a building that was lost. It was a, they felt like they couldn't make it or revitalize it or reimagine it, and uh, it got replaced. And then, to some chagrin, obviously, for the architectural community and the community at large, but when uh, we were talking about what to do with Sarasota High School, Paul Rudolph Sarasota High School, the idea was to sort of not have it be about their vision for 21st century learning, but have it be where it became the main administrative uh, building for the campus, which became then the front door. And so everybody was going to be coming to that building differently than what it was imagined way back and ultimately had been used for many, many years where it was just another building on the campus. So as you're driving traffic to that, then how do you control that traffic? And the building has become quite beloved uh, after being neglected for many, many years. And uh, when there was a realization with the school board that they needed to do something with all these people coming in, the discussion was, yes, let's bring everyone there, but now we have to gate everyone at some point from actually having full access to the campus. So that control point became an incredible part of discussion because ultimately the folks at the facilities department have a book in that book it says this is what you do and what they wanted to make us do was a chain link fence. So in this you know, building that now you're spending you know, 12, 14, 16 million dollars to save right through the breezeway uh, it was going to be basically a chain link fence. And we said, well, can we talk about that? And so we ended up reimagining really what that entrance was with that piece. And it wasn't part of the original DNA for the project. And in the end, what we considered it to be was, yes, it was a, a, a control point, but can we have it be basically like an art installation? So where Paul Rudolph's architecture was very, very distinctive, we had to do something there that was, let's call it complementary, but didn't give a false sense of history. We didn't want it to have it feel like when you walk up that somehow it was designed by Paul Rudolph. Um, and ultimately, uh, where the Rudolph structure was white, Ours was black, where his had crisp edges, ours were rounded, where everything for his aligned, ours overlapped. His was hung from above, ours came up from below, and every single gesture that he did, we found a complement to that. And in the end, um, the AIA gave us a regional award for the project, and we received a state award for the project, which is the highest honor the AIA can give for a project in the state of Florida basically for a gate. <laughs> and you see this in the best adaptive reuse projects mm -hmm. where you're, you've got a traditional piece of architecture in Europe, for example, from the 17 or 1800s. And you come along and add to it or amend it or redo the interior in some way. And rather than trying to imitate what was there, you clearly delineate so that the visitor can tell what's old and what's new. Yeah. and. and that is kind of a tried and true way of sort of making it of this time and of this purpose. Uh, there are projects where people do try to backdate them, but this was something where for 21st century le learning, it was a very much a kind of an, an architectural or art installation project through a basically a famous piece of architecture. And, and honestly, nobody else wanted to touch it, you know, because as an architect, when you're dealing with these type of projects, there's hardly any upside, but incredible downside, because architects are quite opinionated, and architectural critics are quite opinionated by nature, and ultimately, the chances of screwing this up were way more leaning to that than it was coming up with a successful design. So, you know, I'm, I don't know, foolish enough to say, raise my hand and and say, I'll do it. Or it could be one of those things, you see those, like, those movies where everyone's lined up and they say, we want to volunteer, and everybody steps, steps back except for one guy. That's kind of what happens uh, with this. So I kind of volunteered to you know, take it on, and it turns out that not only was it uh, fit the bill, incredibly well received locally, but ultimately it's been um, received on a much grander scale.